wanted to take a few moments to talk about materials, beginning with alcohol inks. This is a bottle of the Ranger Adirondack ink, and I also occasionally use the Pinata inks and Spectrum Noir inks, but 95% of the time I use the Ranger Adirondack inks, and I have um, most of the colors, maybe not all the new colors. I like the Ranger because you can squeeze the bottle, I like the way the inks flow, I like their consistency, and since I do a lot of lifting, um, they lift fairly well. All of the alcohol inks that I have um, are extremely fast drying. They are, for the most part, transparent inks, and they're all dye-based, which, when in terms of color, gives you really the spectrum of um, like your inkjet colors of magenta and yellow and cyan, which are a little bit different than the red, blue, yellow um, pigment-based colors. As far as paper, I use um, UPO, and I tend to get the large sheets, the 20 by 26 sheets, and cut them up. And so this piece is a little bit bigger than 6 by 8, and I find that's an easy size for me to film with because I can get a 5 by 7 out of it. Most of the paintings I'll be doing in the class will be probably between 5 by 7 and 8 by 10. Uh, for the exercises, you'd be welcome to just cut them into, you know, three by five or smaller pieces so that you're not wasting a lot of paper. I try not to waste paper, so um, I use both sides of the sheets. And on an exercise, like this was one of my test flow patterns, um, you know, I will come in and use it for lifting or for a different project later. I've pretty much saved every piece of UPO I've ever um, purchased and have managed to repurpose it in some manner. The UPO comes in several weights. Um, if you're doing a very large piece, you might want the 144 pound heavier weight, but for the most part, I'll just use whatever I can find, which is generally around 70 in the 60s to 70s. For my lifting, I use the 91% alcohol, and this is available in most drugstores. I think the lid's on, I can put it down. I also have some blending solution. Um, I have it, and it's a nice gives a really a glossier feel, so I think that it's a wonderful addition if you've got it. I just, um, for the amount of ink painting I do, this is a lot more cost effective. I tend to dispense it into a container that I can put a lid on it and use an eyedropper or a thing called an oiler boiler to um, squirt the alcohol onto the paper. For my brushwork, I use a weld palette and I cover mine in aluminum just because it's easier to clean up and I can dispense ink into it or alcohol for use with the small brush. Here is my small brush and I use it for both the ink and the alcohol and I'll go for masking. Here is some masking fluid. This is the PBO drawing gum and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about masking. For texturing, I often use felt. I fold it up and use it to dab or cotton balls and I have um, Q-tips or cotton swabs in either the regular round version or this kind of pointy version. For doing um, splattered effects, I use the toothbrush with either ink or alcohol. And I often work with gloves. Um, this keeps my hands a little bit cleaner and it's just a little bit tidier. Another product that I occasionally use is uh, canned air. And this would be for making some air blown effects. You can also use an air compressor or perhaps a cool hair dryer. With all of these things, you just want to be very careful to keep your ventilation good and work very safely. In addition to the brushwork, I use uh, markers and pens on occasion. So this is an alcohol ink marker. And there are, again, lots and lots of brands of it, and you can um, use it to make lines or even for lifting if it's a very pale color. And for pens, I have um, the white Signo pen. This is a sepia pen. And here is the black Micron pen. These fine tip pens I use for detail work. I also occasionally use a pencil for drawing. And you'll want to draw fairly lightly on the UPO so that you don't see a lot of lines. So I think that covers the basic materials that I use.